uh, resin printing is awesome. It's incredibly messy, especially if you do as I did. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I had a lot of trouble with my printer. First with my Ender 3, wanted to throw it out of the window probably a hundred times. Changed everything around on it and bought new pieces, nothing helped. In the end, it was a broken cable. The cable that goes to the extruder motor had a little break in one of the cables and just every once in a while, it gave a bad connection and failed to print and failed to print and failed to print. And I tried different nozzles, different hot ends, different Bowden tubes. I tried everything, basically nothing helped in the end because that was not a problem. In all my rage, I bought another printer, the Ender Hallet 1. It's a resin printer. I wanted a bit more detail in my upcoming project because I really wanted to look pristine and I'm super happy with how it's turning out so far. Also, another reason why it's taking this long is because I'm learning Fusion 360 as per a lot of your suggestions because I know, I know 3ds Max is not software to CAD and model and design stuff like that. But I was using the stuff that I know. Back to the Hallet 1. Uh, resin printing is awesome. It's incredibly messy, uh, especially if you uh, do as I did. I ran out of FEP film and I really wanted to finish my project and print a last little piece, so I tried alternative films for the bottom of the vat. And I can now confidently tell you all. Don't. The first thing I tried was to fix the original fat film that was broken and had a little hole into it with some tape. And here's the result. Print completed. There we go. Looks perfect. Wow. Until I saw this. This. So in other words, that was quite the failure. Wasting a lot of resin and 8 hours of print time. The resin probably leaked in between the fab film and the tape, uh, hardening a little bit of resin there and getting stuck on the bottom. So I bought this, and I bought this. Since I really wanted to continue with my initial project and I didn't want to wait for FVP film to arrive, I went to the local store and bought binding covers and laminating film. Uh, laminating film actually got suggested by a couple of YouTubers as an alternative for FVP film. You first have to heat up the glue so it becomes transparent and then put it on the vat like you usually do. But I immediately noticed that it stayed a bit sticky on the glue side so that was kind of a red flag that it would probably stick to the LCD screen and not release the print easily. Just also the film felt way more tight on the vat and also sounded as if it was higher pitched so that's probably also not good. Next up I leveled the printer again because the new film was 125 microns and had a different thickness. I added the resin and crossed my fingers. And surprise surprise, only two hours into the print it already started sticking to the plastic vat. As you can see, the support themselves also already came loose, so that's why I cancelled the print. So, off with this film. And on to the next one. Of which I had higher hopes because it felt more slippery, which is very important for the print to let loose. Until I put it on the vat and... <laughs> that happened. Uh... So in other words, this film is not as flexible as it's supposed to be and that should have been a warning, but since I am very stubborn, I continued being stupid. Also, the pressure on this film was way too high and there was barely any flex to it, so I figured maybe heating it would help. After heating, I pushed the film to hopefully keep it in a looser position. But as it cools down again, you can hear the pitch go up, so it didn't do much. Aha, uh -huh. it already stuck to the build plate. <laughs> Just wanted to film to show you how terrible it sounded. Anyway, that didn't work. And at this point, I really didn't know how bad the situation was, but apparently... I got a suggestion, don't try this. <laughs> Holy sh**. 
And I know my situation is quite a unique one because I cannot imagine that a lot of people would try to use other types of plastic, which was probably a very dumb idea. But you know, if you want to move on with a project, you sometimes do stupid stuff. And on the other hand, now I really know how this printer sticks together. I'm totally not trying to justify my situation. While I was having this little problem here, I looked online as one does to see if there's any tutorials on how to take this thing apart or how the screen fits together and uh, how damaging it could be. There was nothing to be found, but I did read that some people's uh, VAT film also failed with the original one and it can ruin printers. So since there's no video, I figured I just put up my camera and uh, document me opening this thing and I really did my best to put the video as organized together as I could because I didn't really have much time to focus on the camera in the beginning. Let's put this sad printer on the operating table. I was a bit lucky that I was working with water soluble resin which smells way less but uh, I figured out that uh, still isopropyl alcohol did a better job of getting rid of it. Uh, here I got rid of the first panel and as you can see I discovered that it really leaked in on all sides. So off with the second panel and as you can see there was also leaked resin on the heatsink for the UV light. Next I removed the stepper motor for the build plate which is also full of resin as you can see. So what I did is I dripped some isopropyl alcohol in there to really try to get it out as good as possible and I hope that not too much leaked in the motor itself. Uh, next I tested if this stuff was actually uh, conductive in the first place and luckily it wasn't so it shouldn't be causing any shorts. And now for the moment of truth, let's turn it on. Pretty nerve wracking to be honest. Well, you're there to see the explosion if it happens. Or not. Apparently the thing just started right up. Next I'm getting rid of the resin that was cured straight onto the glass. And following that I'm checking if the screen still works. That's actually what I'm most nervous about. Oh yeah, it's all under the screen. So that naturally meant that I had to dig deeper into this problem and that I really had to get all the way on the back of the screen. Uh, you will see me cleaning a lot because the resin was everywhere. Next I disconnected the power supply. This is the back of the mirror. The light shines from here and reflects off of the mirror through the LCD screen. Then I removed the front panel and the front screen. Next I unscrewed the motherboard and clipped the cable ties. Once that was a bit out of the way I could remove the screws to get to the back of the LCD screen. Looks like it's definitely on the screen. And here we have a nice view of the UV LED that's reflecting off of the mirror on the inside so there's no resin there luckily. Next I heated up the screen to hopefully loosen the adhesive beneath it and uh, carefully I pried it loose with a utility knife. And um, now after the fact I can tell you that it would be safer to try and get in between there with a guitar pick because I damaged a bit of the paint on the sides of the screen that is supposed to block off the UV light. I have to fix that afterwards and I'll show you how I did that. Um, now I'm loosening the resin that's on there with a good bit of isopropyl and after waiting for a bit I finally could make it underneath with my spatula. Uh, so as you can see it looks quite clean and also the front but what I noticed is that underneath the connector itself there is a little electronic components some resistors as I can see and uh, there was also resin in between there so I peeled back the captain tape cleaned it up and uh, put back some uh, electrical tape since the stickiness of the captain tape got ruined by the isopropyl alcohol some more cleaning on the glass part since it leaked on the sides as well and I found that um, monitor cleaner works way better to get rid of the streaks because isopropyl seems to leave a 
little hazy uh, shine on the surfaces, so... I'm putting some temporary electrical tape because the original adhesive didn't stick anymore. Otherwise the screen would fall out when I'm turning the printer. Now I'm putting the mirror assembly back uh, onto the back of the printer. And this is the type of screw for this. Also what I have to say is that I immediately closed my window whenever this happened so the resin wouldn't cure onto all the parts. I poured some resin through the cooling fins so it could leak through and with a big brush I tried to remove as much as I could from in between there. And now on to assembling everything again. So the motherboard goes back with the same type of screws I showed earlier. Next up I connected the connecting part to the motor and put the motor back into its original place. Put back the screws where they belonged and made sure that everything was nice and snug. Then connecting the motor and that part is finished. Now I'm going to connect the bottom plate. Uh, first we line up the hole and put the screws back. Originally there was a little cable tie there holding the cables together, so I'm doing the same. And then you have the two connectors for the fans. They go in the first and the second slot on the motherboard. They're also labeled fan 1 and fan 2. I don't think it really matters where you put them, because I think originally they came the other way around. Next time I'm connecting the cable for the top LCD screen, which goes there on the motherboard. And it has a little bracket that you have to clip on. Then I'm connecting the cable with the brown wire and that goes in the middle there. And that's the cable for the sensor that tells the printer it's at its maximum Z height. Now connect back the front panel, make sure that the USB ports line up with the board. The copper pins have to face down and then put the little bracket over the cable again. Next up we'll put it back and at the top of the printer we use the longer tapered screws as I'm pointing out here. Now let's put back the fan with the sticker towards the heatsink. On the bottom of the printer we use the small tapered screws. And next up I'm connecting back the power supply. I made a little drawing at the top so you can follow along on how to connect the wires. Let's now put the power supply back in its place and from the bottom put the three screws in. The little side panels have a little edge that clicks in between the other uh, panels. And with that being said, let's put all the panels back onto the printer. And everything is back together. As you can see here, on the bottom of the front screen, there is resin still seeping out. And in the future, this will give me problems. I will come back to that at the end of the video. But first, let's see if everything works as it should now. It is still starting up. And here at the bottom of the screen, you can see little scratches that I made with the X-Acto knife. So I will have to fix that. So it's definitely advised to use <laughs> a plastic uh, guitar pick or something to lift the screen and don't use this X-Acto knife to pry it loose. Also, if your resin spill is not as bad as mine and it just seeped a little bit in between the screen, you could probably get away with just lifting the screen and cleaning it up that way without opening up the whole printer. So out with the screen again to fix the damage I caused with the X-Acto knife and for that I'm using a primer here that I use to put solar panels on the van and it's extremely thick and uh, won't let any light through. You could probably also use nail polish or something uh, thick just that doesn't uh, let light through. Now I'm putting back the adhesive and uh, actually I'm thinking about maybe using some rubber or silicone or something in the future to prevent the resin from spilling past the LCD again. I'm actually surprised that Creality didn't do this in the first place. Anyway, look at this. It's uh, fixed as far as I can see. So let's put it back together and off we go. Ready for printing again whenever I receive the new film. Oh, and I was so glad that this was finally finished, this messy job. It probably took me five and a half hours to do all of this. But two days later, the LCD screen didn't work anymore. At least the touch layer didn't work anymore. So I completely disassembled, forgot the film. 
but I found massive amounts of uh, resin in between all the connectors of the screen itself and so I should have actually probably got in there in the first place and cleaned it up and not let it sit there and corrode. So I tried cleaning off the touch layer and put everything back together but that didn't help a bit. It just was the same as before where uh, sometimes it registers a touch but totally not where I'm clicking <laughs> and see I'm trying to click the arrow here and it clicks underneath it so. Also the isopropyl alcohol I used to clean the screen on the inside uh, messed it up a bit and there's light leak on the bottom now and some weird spots but at least there's still an image. And to my surprise this software has mouse support so luckily I can still uh, work with the printer this way. And uh, if I want to load files from a USB stick, I can use a USB hub, which I can also confirm works. Or just load the files through the network, which I think is also a possibility, but I didn't try that out yet. And fast forward a couple of days, I received a new FEP film from 3D Materials. Apparently they're stating that it should be way more durable. So let's see uh, if that's true. I'm re-leveling the build plate and then I am filtering the resin that I saved that was all over the table. Uh, hopefully that still prints, but let's see. Here I'm putting uh, the mouse and the USB stick in the USB hub and as you can see that also works perfectly. So luckily I can still control the printer this way and let's print. Well, it seems to me like the printer still works. Let's take it off of the bed. So finally, I have the finished print. Uh, well, it took me some time to get here, but at least I can now continue with the project and hopefully bring to you the video I was actually planning to <laughs> release with something I've been designing completely myself and I'm pretty proud of it. It should be here in hopefully a week or two. And on top of that, I'm also working on another project that should also come as soon as possible. I'm not gonna spoil it yet, but I really cannot wait to release it and show you what I've been working on. In the meantime, I hope I helped some of you out with uh, resin printer problems, if there's any out there. I definitely learned a lot and uh, I can continue printing. Uh, please don't forget to watch my other videos. If you enjoyed what I made here, please don't forget to subscribe and uh, hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye.